next we're going to look at materials in a lot more detail. So again, we're just dragging a couple of primitives while we're practicing with this. It's a nice simple way to explain and practice. It's a great way to learn as well before you actually try and do real scenes, which we'll come on to later. So we're just going to drag on a few different materials and have a quick look at those. Let's get some uh, exposed concrete. Um, you can see we need to perhaps zoom in a bit to see that texture a little bit more. Let's have a quick look at the wood. Um, so we'll just drag some wood on. You can see they all come with different sort of levels of reflectivity, uh, different sort of types of parameters and textures as well. So it's quite a big variety of these sort of materials that ship with Twinmotion. Um, that's a really adv advantage. It's a really great starting point. Now, what we can do is click onto the color wheel. Uh, it always seems to pop out right in the wrong place. So uh, it's a good idea to kind of move it out of the way slightly. But you'll see that we can kind of slide through the different color aspects of the, of the material. And if we click OK, we can essentially come out and actually basically colorize the texture. Now you can see that occurring down in the right corner, um, but you see we've colorized that texture. So we've taken the basic twin motion one, essentially mixed in some different colors. That's where we go to. So if you do want to actually modify the texture itself, you click onto the texture button of the color channel and essentially you can clear and load in different textures. We'll do that a little bit later. We can change the luminosity value. That essentially lightens or darkens or it's how much light the material emits. And again, we've mentioned the grunge before. That's a great way to sort of make things look a bit more weathered and sort of aged and a bit less kind of perfect. Um, the sound is really only relevant once you're actually in the uh, presenter mode. It used to be called bin motion, but it's now called presenter. So you won't really notice that for now. So we'll kind of go back um, using the breadcrumbs. We'll take a look at the reflection channel. And again, you can kind of slide out the reflectivity and dull it right down so it doesn't really reflect any light or uh, objects or environment around it at all. Now, they've done a really good job with the reflections. Um, they're much improved over the 29 version of Twinmotion. Um, and you can actually load in a reflections color map as well. So if you do have a reflection map, uh, for your scene, for your texture, you can load that in in the more channel there. Scale is pretty obvious. That allows you to scale the uh, underlying texture. Again, it, you can see the grunge itself doesn't scale. That's a sort of sits on top of the image. And then, of course, you can kind of rotate the texture as well in the full sort of rotation as well. It's quite straightforward to do. And then you can click on the axis. You can actually click and move or stretch on the X and Y axes. So you can actually kind of move and stretch the different materials and move them around if you want to sort of maybe map particular things like brickwork or textures um, onto a wall uh, or floors onto um, a floor properly, then you can use those to, to map. We've got a couple of other settings if we click in the deeper settings. Again, we've mentioned the bump before. That's how we can kind of create a lot more realism, particularly when you load in a bump map. So you click on more. Uh, to begin with, there's always a generic texture in there. So you can clear that and you actually load in a proper bump map. Same with Glow. So again, Glow is a little bit different from uh, the previous thing we were talking about, which is actually how much material, uh, how much light the material emits as opposed to reflecting. Day cycle on or off, that really is to do with the actual lights when we get into Glow. Um, metallicness is another quality, a little bit different from reflectivity, if you like, um, which kind of like is how dark or sort of shiny the, the object is. And essentially you can kind of click more um, and we can load in reflection or so we say metallic maps as well. Now a lot of materials do come with that. We'll perhaps talk about that a bit later when we go off to something like Quixel and download some textures. The new x-ray material, that's really cool. That's uh, designed to help you show things like services and things once that's enabled. And you can select different colors um, of the x-ray material. So we can try and show that in the later part of the video when it's relevant. So let's look at materials a little bit more deeply. Now, if you click the um, icon down at the bottom of the material manager, you can switch from grid view to single texture view. And that's quite nice to it, make it a little bit more visible and a bit larger. Um, if you click T, you'll actually get the texture uh, sampling uh, pipette tool. And that enables you to pick up the various textures from the model that you've used. And now you will see them display down in the dock. So when you click, you'll see them display down the dock. Then you can kind of switch to another view. And if you do want to, you can actually click the plus sign. This is how you can actually create brand new materials 
and then you can drag those onto the objects and we'll have a look at how we can kind of duplicate them as well. Duplicating is a nice technique because you get the underlying texture um, and then you can kind of tweak it with maybe different sort of color, color ranges and things like that. So from one texture you can essentially create quite a wide variety of different textures. That's why the Twin Motion Library, I mean it's I think it's probably seven, eight hundred different types of materials, uh, but they don't need to cover absolutely everything because you can duplicate them and edit them and tweak them quite a bit. So in terms of um, renaming them, that's fairly straightforward. You just right click or click on the dots and rename. And you can see we've got a completely different material based on the original one that we started with. So let's have a quick look. We'll play around with the reflection a bit more and the scale. And when we're ready, um, the cool thing is we can kind of right click and we can add that to our user library. Now, the good thing with the user library is that it's essentially our user library on our computer. We can share this actually via the server if needed. And if you're working in a team, I definitely recommend that and show you how to do that. But you can see there is that new chestnut red uh, timber that we've created, very reflective. Um, what's quite nice is if you do want to, you can click the plus sign, uh, create a little folder, and you can organize those um, into subfolders. So be a bit more organized, you can right click, you can rename them, you can cut and paste them, a few things you can do, but not a huge amount of control. But that's the user library essentially. So let's click on the plus sign. You see we've got a new category going up. We can essentially just drag that uh, new chestnut red in there. We can rename that, um, let's call it custom materials. And we just drag custom chestnut red into that folder. Now what that does, it actually creates a special folder on our document section on our computers. Um, it's quite easy to find that if you do want to share it with a colleague. I can show you how to do that later.